Welcome to Startup to Success. I have a very special guest with me today, Dr. Larian, who is a clinical chief of the Division of Head and Neck Surgery at Cedar Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California, and the co-founder of MD Bio, a plant-based medicine company. Dr. Larian, I am so excited to have you on the show. Welcome. It's a real pleasure being here. Thank you for having me. I love Cedar Sinai, by the way. I just gave birth there four months ago. I had my third child at Cedar Sinai. It's one of my favorite hospitals. My father got his liver transplant at Cedar Sinai. So I respect all the doctors at Cedar Sinai. I think you guys are the best of the best, honestly. You're too kind. Thank you. Oh, I am you look great. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm trying to get back into shape and I gained a lot of weight with him, but you know, I had to get back into shape and exercise and all of that to get healthy. I, I'm not in my 20s like I was with my first two daughters. So being in the 40s and having a kid is very inspirational. It pushes yes. me to exercise daily. <laughs> Absolutely. So Absolutely. I can raise him until he's 18 at least, you know. <laughs> but um, wow, it's such an honor to have you on the show. Um, I'm so excited about all the different things we're going to talk about, specifically CBD and your brand. But before we dive in, I always love to ask my guests, how did you figure out your why? What was the inspiration behind you choosing the career that you have to, to impact oh, so many lives? Very good question. I was actually uh, thinking about going to art school. And uh, then, I, then I had an epiphany that I was not as good an artist that I had originally thought. And then I, I was studying, I was interested in biology, so I studied sciences. And this was in the late 80s. I got a job at a free clinic in Laguna Beach. And it was a HIV clinic in Laguna Beach where there's a, lot, a, a huge uh, homosexual population there. And these poor patients were coming in. And at the time, there was such a you know, such a stigma with HIV and there was so much unknown and how to treat it, everything. These poor guys would come in and they would have so much fear and we were in charge of diagnosing them and guiding them and navigating this very difficult path. And I thought, what, what an incredible relationship to be allowed to be in, to, to try to help a person at this compromised position in life and try to get them to a better place. And I thought that relationship was, was, was the, what sealed the deal for me, right? To, to have the, truly it was, it was an honor and a, and, a, and a privilege to be, for someone to put their trust in me to guide them through this very difficult place, right? Yeah. And so that did it, that, that hooked me and, and, I, and I just wanted to always have that kind of dynamic and be able to help people. And, and that's, that's where it started. Well, tell me a little bit about your background. So um, I, I, I migrated to the States when I was 12. So I feel like there is a, a first generation immigrant. Um, I always feel this need of uh, feeling so blessed to be in this country. And, and this need of helping others is so huge in me. And I'm wondering if that's something that you, you've also experienced. I mean, I'm not even sure, were you born here or did you immigrate here? No, I did. I immigrated here when I was 14. Oh, wow. Um, See, I, that's. Yeah. And, and I, you know, at the time it, it, I come from Iran, Iran was yep. in, in the middle of a war for yep. Iraq. So, you know, just my heart goes out to the people of Ukraine right now because I, I had a similar experience. We would at nights have sirens go off yeah. and the planes would fly by and the bombs would come and in the mornings you'd call everybody you knew to make sure everybody's okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's anyways, but I had the good fortune of being able to leave, right, and come here. And, um, you know, the, the opportunity, the plentifulness here was just immediately obvious to me. Yeah. Um, uh, especially in California, the, you know, the, the society was very welcoming and, you know, had so many different kind of cultural diversity, yep. diversity. Yep. and it was very eye-opening for me because Iran is more of a homogenous society, you know, right. so having all this diversity was just mind-boggling to yeah. me, right? Yeah. And then um, I remember getting into university and one day I was walking your across the campus in the university. And I was just, I just had to stop and look around me and say, only four years ago, 
I was somewhere where this would not be an option for me. Oh, wow. This just would not be a possibility. I just remember that moment so well because it was a moment that I had to I realize that I had to take advantage of whatever opportunity presented itself. That I shouldn't sit back and just kind of yeah. take take it easy on everything, you know, like just assess every option and go forward, you know, combine that with the desire to help people. It's a pretty magnificent combination in this country. I love it. I love it. It's so inspiring. And I hope that the listeners, uh, whether they were born here or immigrated, um, get inspired and, and do take advantage and not waste time because we are blessed to be in this country. And like you said, you know, gr growing up in Iran, my husband's from Iran and he went through that trauma of, of glasses shattering, the sirens going up, you know, and it's just sometimes when my daughters complain about something, the first thing he says is, you know, stop complaining, that, you know, if, or if an earthquake takes some, you know, he's just like, listen, this is not a big deal, okay? This is what we've gone through. And so um, that keeps us grounded in a sense. I feel like our background, the, the experiences we've had, but going into, you know, the, the uh, just your your career and and becoming a doctor tell me a little bit about that journey how was that it was it was amazing because um uh, i went to uc irvine undergrad and they had so much money the school and the, the its science and literature departments were so incredibly strong so i got both of those at the same time which really helps and then uh, I went to medical school and med school was also at Irvine and it was incredible also. And I was, had the good fortune of having incredible classmates. So instead of being a cutthroat environment, it was a very you know, helpful, everybody trying to yeah. help each other get along kind of environment. And very much, we were all friends. We had a classmate who was 15 years old at the time, a little genius. Wow. We had to teach him how to drive. And <laughs> all of us were involved in just taking care of each other. So yeah. the experience was amazing. And then uh, I followed that by going to UCLA for a head and neck surgery residency training, which was a, another six long years, but very, you know, it was also incredible and, uh, and fun at the same time because yeah. you were the bunch of very smart, very competent people who were trying to do all sorts of amazing things. And so once I was finished with residency, I had to figure out what to do with myself because up to that point, I knew I knew I knew what the stakes were and I knew how to achieve. You know, I knew how to study, get grades, do yeah. good on tests, you know, learn about what you're doing, and then you're gonna get to the next level. And once that was done, the, the game was very, very different. Yeah. You know, it was a business situation. Yeah. I had to deal with money finally, and money and healthcare was a little funky yeah. to, to deal with. And, and I had to learn how to do that. And it took a few years before I kind of had my bearings on figuring out the economics and the business of healthcare and trying to also still be at the pinnacle of, of get, delivering good healthcare. Took a few years, but I, I, I got that handled at some point, finally. And then over the years, I've been here at Cedars. I started the head and neck cancer program at Cedars and we developed that and have grown that. And my practice has become more and more super specialized over the years. And I had the good fortune of my peers, the 50 ear, nose, and throat doctor, head and neck surgeons at Cedars, electing me to become their chief, the, the division chief. And so I've done that for the past decade almost. Wow, that's, that's, that's amazing. Tell me a little bit about, um, you know, how did you focus, how did you figure out what niche to focus on? Because obviously, you know, you're in med school and you're exposed to all these different things. And, and generally most, most MDs that I know choose the easy path. They just become MDs, general mm -hmm. MDs, family doctors. And, and I have a cousin who's a doctor actually. And I remember he wanted to focus on something, you know, be, um, a specialist and, mm -hmm. uh, I remember him saying, I have to study a few more years. So how was that? How did you make that decision of, do I specialize in something or do I just take the faster route? Yeah, that's a very good question. I, 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 was, I was always fascinated by the eyes. So at first I thought I was become, going to become an ophthalmologist. And I, and I started doing research when I was in, uh, in college and continued the research in university, but while I was in medical school, 
while in medical school, I made, met one of the professors during my anatomy course, the first course in medical wow. school. And he was an ear, nose, and throat doctor. He was an incredible guard, the guy. And he, um, he did ear surgery, so microscopic ear surgery. And as of the first year, we hit it off and said, why don't you come and check out what I do? I know you're going to be an eye doctor. You know, but this way you'll get to see right. how the practice of medicine happens. You know, that it, it had, he had no other interest besides just being a friend, right? So I went and saw him and, you know, this was a personality thing that guided me to this. He was an incredible guy, a huge personality, and he was doing amazing things. You know, people have, could have had a hard time hearing and he would put little implants in their ear and now they could hear. Wow. He would fix eardrums and drill out tumors out of the skull and I just was fascinating, was wow. fascinating. Wow. and then throughout med school I compared every specialty to what he was doing you know and our specialty is interesting because we we see men and women we see kids we see older patients so there's no limitations in the type of patient that you see and I and I like that um, you can be very specialized and be surgical like I am now, or you can be very clinical if you want to just see patients in the office. You can have patients who come in that you know for a short period of time, you do an easy surgery and it's done, or some of my cancer patients who I've known for 20 years. Mm. And so you can build bonds that are long lasting or short term. So all of this was very pleasing to me as a, as a combination. So that's what guided me away from the ophthalmology and to this, to this field. I love that. And I can sense you have a very um, a social personality uh, and, and I can understand why you like that because then you get to see different types of people and different age groups and so on. So it's not, yeah. Um, so uh, let's talk about your brand, your CBD brand. I'm, I'm so excited about CBD in general and I, I would love to learn um, from your perspective, what got you interested in CBD? from a professional stand, from a medical standpoint and, and how you got involved in it and to create your brand, that's just so amazing. I wanna hear all about it. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting story actually. So it was all driven by patients. So, you know, I, I, I do some of these surgeries that are very complex. So if someone comes in with a cancer in their tongue or their mouth, I have to remove a portion of their tongue or their jaw or their throat. And then that may follow with chemotherapy and radiation. So it's a very hard treatment at times, right? And I was getting these older, relatively frail 80 year old patients coming in, oftentimes women, right? And they were, they would go through the surgery and women are tough. So they would go through the surgery, they would tough it up, right? You guys give birth to your life, you, have, yeah. you already have an advantage over us. Yes, right? <laughs> you, anyways, the women were tough. And I was always assuming that's the thing. And then they would go through the chemotherapy and radiation and chemotherapy and radiation together is very hard. Yeah. And some of these ladies were going through it and just kind of, it was hard, but they were breezing through it. And then I would get these big buff guys in their forties going through the same treatment and they're barely making it, you know? Oh. And I kept asking them, what is your secret? I mean, yeah. And they would, they would just giggle and just yeah. not say anything. Yeah. And about a decade ago, when, marijuana became legalized in California and became more kind of less taboo. Right. They start saying, you know, my grandkid comes over every day after radiation and rolls up a joint for me and we smoke it together. <laughs> and because I do that, my, I have a better appetite. Right. Right. I'm not as anxious. Yep. I sleep better at nights. I'm not yep. as, having as much pain. So I don't take as much pain medication. So I'm not as constipated as I was before. They were, they were having times where there was joy in the middle of a very strenuous treatment, right? Whereas the other patients who were trying to stick to the program and do everything as, as they were told, and they were, they were having a real hard time. They were taking lots of anxiety medication and pain medications and having side effects from all those things, right? And then I started looking into it. I started probing everyone, right? And I, and I found that uniformly, the ones who were using cannabis products we're having an easier time going through this very hard treatment. So then I started doing research. And then I found in, um, in Canada, because it was more legalized in Canada, there was actually an article published from a university who 
looking at patients with head and neck cancer going through treatment, and they looked at the two different subgroups, ones who were using cannabis and the ones who weren't, and they saw that they were doing significantly better in terms of the quality of their experience, right? They did, didn't comment about cure it and survival or anything like that, but that's not what I was interested in at that right. point. I was interested in why, why are these guys having an easier time? And you know, when a patient's mindset is in a better place, they always do better. That was already good enough for me, right? Yeah. And so that was enough ammunition. So then I went around and told all my doctor friends, I'm like, listen, guys, you guys, you guys just have to go ask your patients. Just keep probing. Don't relent. Yeah. And lo and behold, my friend who's a gastroenterologist said, you know what? Some of my patients who have colitis and inflammatory diseases of their colon and intestines, who are taking all these biologics and heavy-duty medications, the ones who are taking less medications are the ones who are using more cannabis products. Boom. Orthopedic patients, the ones who are having joint pains, the ones who are taking these medications are using I mean, these products are using less medications, less narcotics, less anti-inflammatories, and that's that's what started the whole thing. Wow, that's incredible. Now, um, I, I've come across many doctors that, um, I'll give you an example, uh, a psychiatrist that spoke about CBD and said that, um, I know that a lot of my patients use it and it helps them with anxiety, but I'm not allowed to refer my, my patients to use CBD because right. of the, the medical board I guess doesn't allow it. How how does that part work? I, I find I find it so unfair that there's something that's working so well for people, but then doctors are are not really allowed to comfortably make that recommendation. Well, this was originally two, two years ago, ten years ago. Uh, I felt very uncomfortable at that yeah. point. There was this product called Marinol. Yeah, right? it yeah. was a prescription. It wasn't a very good product, and um, uh, people who were taking it, patients who were taking it, didn't have very good outcomes, but I felt uncomfortable prescribing it because I thought maybe my name is going to go on a list. I had this paranoia, which is, which most doctors have, right? Your but life is on the line. It's not life a on the line, right? exactly. Yeah. But as it's become more and more acceptable, and because our licenses are state-based, they're not federal-based, our uh, license to practice medicine is based on the Medical Board of California. Right. And so they are becoming more accepting of these alternative medicines. Right. And because now it's medically legal, and it's actually recreational to me right. now, people can go and get their license and get used things. I don't have to actually prescribe it. I can just say, you know what? I think for you in particular, that is an option that may be worthwhile exercising. You know, and so I'm not even writing a prescription, I'm just talking about what's there what I know in terms of the science of it, and they can decide if they want to use it or not, you know? And that was, that was the impetus for us to do this actually, because I didn't know what to tell them really. I'm like, go to a dispensary and ask a butt tender to give you something. And yeah. where, where's the science in there? What dose are you going to take? And right. yeah. how is it going to affect you? And what side effects you might have? A lot of unknowns. Yeah, I and and I think that's the the that was the fine line. And sometimes I wondered, you know, I know that some people had the the medical card or some kind of a prescription card for marijuana that they could go and purchase. And if they got caught by the cops with marijuana in their car, if they had that, then they were fine. But I always wondered, like, which type of doctors wrote those prescriptions, or you know, like yeah. I just always wondered that. <laughs> Well, there are two, at the time when they started, there were two types of doctors. Ones who firmly and truly believed them. Um, ones who actually knew the science of it and knew that they were helping. And there's a few in LA that I know who are just incredible people. Gutsy, yeah, right? Has to take you know, dedicated yeah. to taking care of patients yeah. and willing to yeah. face the backlash, right? And then there was a bunch of doctors who were retiring or but doctors who thought that this would be an easy way to have a practice and, you know, make money, that was the second category, you know? Right. And, you know, listen, they were, they were offering a service too because there were lots of people who knew this. And one of the reasons we decided to go ahead with this is that we looked at this uh, article that came out years ago. Um, I think it was, it was in JAMA, right? And it said that in all the states that had legalized medical marijuana, 
right? The, the narcotics overdose rate had gone down by 25%. If yeah. they just legalize medical marijuana, right? 25% less deaths, right? Not a dedicated program towards fighting narcotic overuse, right. nothing like that. You know, I mean, that's just in and of itself mind boggling. Yeah, it's amazing. So tell me a bit about your brand. What steps did you take to start that? So uh, at first, being doctors and afraid, we thought, okay, we can't really make products because we'll get arrested and we'll license <laughs> go away and all those, all those fears, right? So we thought we should go into testing. So once we test products and we see, oh, this is a good product that's clean and doesn't have all sorts of toxins in it, we can recommend it to our patients. But that was a very difficult thing. The testing process is very challenging and so on. So then we thought, okay, and then also 97% of the products out there at the time had all sorts of toxins and chemicals yeah. added to it to make the flowers look better and smell better and all sorts of shenanigans, right? So then, okay, if we're never going to find anything good, so we can test as much as we want. We're never going to get anything, right? So we decided we're going to make our own products. Smart. Right? Smart. So we went and bought land to actually go ahead and plant our own plants. We we're going to build a manufacturing plant also to build our own pills and everything. So from A to Z, so it would be under our control. We would know the quality of what we have and the products that we're making so we could give it to our patients and then family and anybody else. Okay. Yeah. Very difficult. We've spent a lot of money doing that. And then we saw that there's lots of challenges because the state wasn't at the time clear on how they wanted to make this business run. The taxation is so prohibitive. And then the market was limited to these products being only at dispensaries. There's right. still a lot of the population we're trying to help are people who are not very comfortable going into a dispensary, right? Especially and, the, older, the baby boomers. I feel like they're just, they tie it to marijuana and they just don't feel good about it. Right. That's true. But, and they're the ones who can get the most help. Right. So then we started looking at the science of just CBD. If CBD alone can have a role in making a difference, and absolutely, yeah. CBD does. THC and marijuana-based products have a place, but non-THC products, the hemp-based products, also have an important place and can, and can help immensely. So then we changed course uh, to, to become a, a, a hemp-based company. Smart. Yes. Smart. Yeah. Now, tell me a little bit about hemp in terms of, you know, people sometimes ask, um, and I've come across this, and I use CBD myself because of my hemiplegic migraines, um, but, you know, people sometimes question it and say CBD without THC isn't as as good as CBD, uh, like broad spectrum CBD, for example, that has no THC, right? right. Um, or they'll say, well, you know, it has to have THC in order to work. And for me, I've been using broad spectrum CBD. It's been working perfectly fine for me. I don't feel like I want it. I personally don't like the THC aspect of it, especially when I'm taking it in the morning before my workday begins, or if I'm driving my kids to school, I do not want to feel any psychoactive effect whatsoever. So from the medical standpoint, um, how would you differentiate? And if somebody's saying, oh, well, if it's CBD that I, and it doesn't have THC, it's not going to work. What's your... Well, let me, let me explain the science behind it. So in our body, we have this thing called an endocannabinoid system. Right. The endocannabinoid system is in charge of getting your body back to homeostasis or balance. Now, the paradigm of healthcare has always been, you have an illness, we overdose you with a certain chemical one chemical, right? Morphine or Tylenol or whatever, aspirin, anything. And then that'll subside that, that event, that problem, and then you get better. Whereas our body works differently. Our body has always worked in when something goes wrong in the process of healing, you bring your back, yourself back to balance, right? So the paradigm is different. And then the cannabinoid system is involved with that paradigm of getting yourself back into balance. So we produce a, a chemical in our body called anandamide. Anandamide is very similar to THC. I think THC is three times stronger than anandamide, right? And that, when your body sees an area that's overactive, especially in our brain, when a nerve is overfiring, it produces anandamide that goes backwards 
to that nerve and says, hey, buddy, you're overreacting. <laughs> Calm, <laughs> settle down, right? Decrease. I mean, any network has that. It has a feedback loop. So when something goes wrong, it can reset itself, right? And anandamide is a reset. So the chemical goes and attaches to a receptor on the nerve, right? A CBD, we call it a cannabinoid receptor, right? And it attaches it to the main site, right? THC also attaches to that main site. CBD attaches to a site area on it. And that site area activates it a little bit and also tempers it a little bit. So that if you have too much THC, the CBD tempers the THC effect down, oh. right? So in a person who has milder symptoms, right? The CBD itself is enough to get enough activation to achieve the purpose, right? The CBD THC combination is good for someone who has more severe problems, right? So for you in particular, your migraines, CBD is enough to do the, or the full spectrum. And the full spectrum is magical because, you know, the other thing I have to say, evolutionarily speaking, we were never accustomed to getting one chemical in high massive doses. We we're always using plants to treat ourselves, right? Time. And your culture and my culture, lots of millions of years. Always tell us to do yeah. this thing. Yeah. Like turmeric. Turmeric was like part of my life all my childhood, right? What about donkey oil? The donkey. Oil. I don't know what that is. Oh my god! So the donkey oil is actually, you know, do you know what it is? Or no, I don't. Oh my god! It's come. It comes from Tehran. <laughs> it's, it's it's an Ar armenians uh swear well persian armenians swear by it because right. it's like it's an antibiotic that it is it comes from a special donkey too it doesn't come from everything oh, i think i know what you're talking about. from a special yeah. village from a special donkey i actually um uh, i'll tell you i had an accident um a couple of weeks ago my eyebrow opened up i had to go to er and get three or four maybe five stitches my mother-in-law said stop let me put some donkey oil on you she uh, put it on within hours it started sealing i didn't even bother going and getting getting it stitched up so i do yeah sorry uh, yeah. I there's the also some magical things out there right so and all these things have multiple different chemicals right yeah. so our body was used to like if they if someone has high blood pressure they give them yeah. this plant right that right. plant kind of one chemical has three four hundred chemicals that maybe 30% of them help bring your blood pressure down. But right. each of them work together or synergistically. So none of them ever get to a toxic level, mm. right? So when you take a full spectrum hemp for your migraines, maybe you have 20, 30, 40, 50 chemicals in there that are working on the migraine, all of them at small doses, none of them toxic, mm. right? And that's the magic of, of these broad spectrum you know, plant-based products is that you're getting multiple chemicals working together to achieve an end, right? And so that's, that's why uh, a full spectrum CBD is phenomenal. And then if that's not enough in some migraine patients, that just may not be enough. Yeah. A little bit of THC may be needed to get you to that. And that may be because your body doesn't produce enough anandamide and you need that. Or maybe your body's just depleted because you've been under the duress of this condition for too long, you know? So there is a role for it, but CBD does majority of the work in and of itself. Yeah. Or cannabinoids, not just CBD alone. Right, all the cannabinoids. right. Yeah. You know, a lot of times the way I look, it, it's just my, my explanation, especially when my daughters who are 16 and 15 ask me, you know, how does CBD work exactly? I'm like, well, it just sends messages to my brain to produce more cannabinoids so that my body can balance itself, you know, and, and it really does. I feel like when I take it, the days that I take it, I'm just feeling overall good. It's not just... Yeah you know, the, the anxiety that's not there, or just, it's, oh, I feel that my body already, like the inflammation is gone and I feel good. So speaking of that, speaking of the, uh, I want to bring up the fact that it does help so many things. And the, the interesting thing about the older generation is that they're like, oh, it's too good to be true. How can it help so many different things? How can it help sleep? How can it help anxiety? How can the same thing help so many things? And a lot of times, you know, my, my reaction to them is like, well, it has CBN in it. CBN helps with sleep. It has this and, that, and they still don't understand. What's your explanation? What, 
how would you explain why it helps so many things? Obviously, you explained it to a certain extent that it, you know, it brings our body to a homo homeostasis and balances us out. But I guess what would be a simpler explanation as to why it helps so many different areas in so our you, body? When, when you sleep at night, you're bringing your body back into balance, right? You're bringing your brain back into balance. See, when you sleep, your brain essentially disconnects from the senses sight, hearing, smell, taste, all these things, touch, right? And it reorganizes itself, right? It creates a balance and a harmony. Your heart is having a very smooth rhythm. It doesn't have ups and downs. Your breathing rate is very even. So everything goes to kind of a baseline. And as you get up in the morning and you get going, you start moving away from that baseline, right? And people who you know that can handle stress really well, are the ones who in their brain, they can bring the nerves over reactivity down. Mm -hmm. And instead of getting to an overreaction you know, to a stressful situation, they can bring themselves down to a balanced state where they can think more clearly. And then there's some of us who get to a, a stressful state and just get overwhelmed. And then we do all sorts of crazy things that we regret because we just overwhelm and we're not in control, right? Mm -hmm. Some of that has to do with the amount of an endomite your brain is producing, in fact, right? that helps to go from this excitable state back to balance, right? So CBN works in a different set of cells, right? CBG works in a different set of cells. So, you know, the combination of the cannabinoids will have an impact on inflammation, on sleep, on anxiety, on pain, on all sorts of things. And so it's just the different set of cells that require a different kind of a medicine you could say the plant medicine that can bring you back to that sense of harmony because harmony is what your body's trying to get to all the time. You know, there, there's these prairie dogs that every day in the morning when they wake up, they watch the sunrise for half an hour, they go nuts the rest of the day, they watch the sunset for half an hour, and they go to sleep all night, right? right? They meditate essentially, right? Meditation is built into our system, right? Meditation also affects the cannabinoid system, the endocannabinoid system, right? So we're always trying to get all steps. You know, during the day when you take, you say, I need a minute yeah. to sit down. What you're doing is you're just bringing everything down to baseline and balance, right? So we have many different ways of doing it. And, and humans really need yeah. all these different ways to get themselves to balance. And this is one very good one. I love it. I love it because I think, you know, obviously technology has helped us in many ways in, in this society, but I feel like it also it's very stressful. Technology can be very tiring for the brain specifically. And sometimes it's hard to, we're, we're always on the go. It's so hard to stop in the middle of the day and pause and be in silent mode or meditate or whatever it is that's going to bring you. And, and I find that just the, you know, a little bit of CBD can just do that and keep me going. And I wish I didn't have to rely on it so heavily, but I do because I don't have the time to pause. Um, to remind our listeners where they could purchase your brand, um, where they can find it and learn more um, about it. Well, we, we, our, our brand is called MD, MD Bio Wellness. So if they get online and look up MD Bio Wellness, they'll come onto our site. And we currently, we have four lines of products. We have one for sleep, the MD Sleep. MD Calm for anxiety. We have one for inflammation. Uh, and then we also have one for inflammation and pain and one for uh, immunity to improve our immunity and decrease our reactivity. You know, COVID, the people who get ill with COVID is when their immune system overreacts, right? And oftentimes, I tell most of my patients that the two main sources of disease in this world are anxiety and inflammation, right? If, an, if you have an overabundance of anxiety, you get mental illness. If you have an overabundance of inflammation in your body, you get all sorts of illnesses, all sorts of organ systems start failing. So getting your body into balance on a regular basis, you know, and giving yourself time during the day to get there is very crucial. It's just that our technology and the way we've constructed our lives doesn't let that happen. Yeah. We should be more like the Spaniards, you know, take a siesta two hours in the afternoon. Yeah and calm it down, right? Yeah. And then get going again. You know, I don't know if we need to advance so fast, so quickly. I don't know if it's good for us, for our kids, for yeah. the society in general. 
I don't know where we're rushing to go to. At the end, we all go to the same place. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we so have so much. What else do we need? You know, we don't need more. I know, I know. But, you know, it's just, it's so amazing that you've taken something that you've, you know, in, in your career, you've seen that it helps people and you've decided to reach and help even more people because with your brand now, you can, you can definitely reach more people and impact and help others at a bigger scale, right? Now, speaking of reaching out, reaching more people, obviously CBD has a lot of challenges and I, I own a marketing agency and we help a lot of tech startup that get funded millions of dollars and we help them scale and grow really fast and acquire customers and when it came to cbd brands specifically cbd is pretty challenging to promote and market yes. online um i know that a lot of brands out there do things not the right way illegally you know they'll do paid ads they'll, they'll promote something and then the link sends them to somewhere else and it's just so tricky which you know we don't we don't mess with that type of marketing but you know from your perspective um the, the i guess the the marketing perspective how, how would you say what were some of the challenges that you guys have come across getting the word out about your brand right yes so you can't really market cbd alone because CBD, based on the FDA's perspective, is a medicine, CBD right. alone. And there's only one company in the US that has FDA approval yep. for that, which is now a prescription strength CBD for seizures, hepatitis, yep. right? And so you can't, you can't go and make something that has CBD and promote it as CBD. So you can't, CBD is out in terms of market, right? You can talk about full spectrum hemp, right? You can, you can, and if that's what you have, right, which yeah, is legal, right? Yeah. Um, th those you can market, which is really challenging because people have known CBD and know CBD, but they don't understand full spectrum hemp yeah. has CBD as one component in there, yeah. right? And so it's, it's, we have to work on educating people, you know? I think what our brand does is that it brings four doctors that are talking about it, right? And we all are, doctors practicing, you know, wow. every day seeing patients and yeah. doing surgeries and treating them while at the same time promoting something that we have full faith in as being something that can help people. So I think being a doctor allows us to talk about it in a different way as compared to just, just another company that's marketing right. something that they think may be helpful, you know, and I can talk about the science of it and the personal experience in my practice with patients. And I think having a face like yours behind the brand is validating. It builds that trust that most people have a hard time trusting a lot of these brands. You know, you go on their website and you can't even find who the owner is. And it makes me stop and think, why am I going to invest anything, even $50 on their product when the, the owner isn't upfront to share their face and who they are? It's like, what are they hiding? So um, yeah, that's amazing. Now, in terms of um, the future of CBD, where do you see it going? Well, I think because now we can do more research on it. You know, until a few years ago, the research was so limited. Yeah. You know, the marijuana research was based on marijuana only produced in the University of Mississippi, and you had to get a federal permission to do the research and only had this particular strain of marijuana that came from there and not necessarily the best strain or didn't have all the cannabinoids in it and all the things you needed. So the research was so limited, right? But now it's much more open and you can do a lot of different things. And I think now we're at the beginning of being able to do wide, wide type of research that can access all sorts of disease states, right? And, and get answers, you know, get clear answers that what, what can help you or whatnot. But, you know, and combining that with genetics, now we can do genetic testing on people and, and personalize your treatment. So, your genetic profile is this, therefore this kind of plant medicine matches your genetics well, this is for you, you know? And that's the science, the future of it. You know? Because as you know, you have, you have friends who get a headache and they take one Tylenol and then another friend who has to take five of them to, to right. control a mild headache, right? Yeah. Yeah. Our sensitivities are very different, right? And we don't know anything. We just, we just give the same dose to everybody and, and go from there. Whereas if you personalize it to them, that's a, that's a magical place to be in. So that's the future. 
The future wow. is personalizing this for you in particular. That's exciting. That's so exciting, Dr. Larry. And I can't believe we're coming to an end. Uh, wow. Just remind our listeners again where they can purchase. And by the way, I love, love the fact that you have, it starts from $14.95. Like literally, if people want to try, you know, 10 pills before they invest so much money, you guys have these different options, which I have never seen that before. I hate that I have to go and invest, you know, $60 or $100 or in a product that I'm not even sure if it's going to work right, for right. me, if the dosage is even good enough for me. So very, I, I love that you gave that option. Yes. So the website is mdbiowellness.com, right? And if you get on there, you'll see the four products that we have currently up. And we're going to have more products coming in, you know, down the line. Um, and you can get, again, just like you said, you can get a pack, a 10 pack and try it out. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, I was stressed out like everybody in the universe, right? And I was having a hard time sleeping. And I, I, was, I took our sleep product at the time we were testing it. So I had it. And all of a sudden, from going from two, two, three, four hours a night, I started sleeping seven, eight, nine hours a night. And then my mom sleeps exceedingly well. I gave it to her to see what happens, right? And she said, you know what? I feel like my sleep is deeper. And when I wake up in the morning, I, she wasn't sleeping longer because you don't need to sleep longer than nine hours, right? <laughs> but she was, she woke up and she said, I feel a little bit more fresh, yeah. you know? So it has an impact on everybody's sleep quality, which is really incredible. It is. It is. Wow. I'm so excited about your product. And, and if people are interested in, in reselling and wholesaling, is that also a, a possibility? Can they... it, is, it is in a few months. Good, good. Uh, so if, if you guys are interested in, in selling uh, Dr. Larian's brand, again, you can go to the same website and we'll have all the information in the show notes as well. Dr. Larian, it, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for educating us on CBD and for inspiring us with your amazing story and the amazing work that you do at Cedar sinai Thank you. Pleasure having you here today. It was, it was truly an honor. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Merci. Bye. <laughs>